What's up everybody? Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with an, a new series I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection. Um, this, For those of you that don't know, it's basically all of the games thus far, with the exception of some of the side arc ones, um, some of the PSP stuff. Uh, the, the one that notably is missing is Portable Ops which takes place between Metal Gear 3 and Peace Walker. Um, not sure how I'm going to do that one because I don't have that one in this collection, but um, there is some story elements, so I'll have to read up on what elements there are that are, kind of make a big difference. But the difference with this one versus what a lot of people have probably done is I'm going to be playing through chronologically, that, hence why we're looking at the Metal Gear 3. Oh, 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 no, 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 stop it. Stop it. Okay. Sorry. Um, hence why we're looking at the Metal Gear 3 uh, screen and not Metal Gear Solid. Because um, for those of you that don't know, the games actually take place out of chronological order. Um, the third one is technically the very first one as far as history goes. Um, and yes, I am going to be playing these two also on Nintendo, which is going to suck because I've played them before when the... Uh, Subsistence came out on on uh, PS3 or PS2. I'm sorry, and uh, they're actually a lot harder than a lot of people think. So, um, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Um, let's see. I forget. Oh, connected to unlock. Oh, they actually added PlayStation trophies. That's cool. I guess I'm just going to click I like MGS3 because I don't remember what the difference is. Um, since this is a playthrough and I'm not really trying to get like achievements and stuff, I'm just going to do normal. Um, and I might skip a few things here and there because I've played through these before so I know kind of what's important and what's not. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Um, there's a couple, I know Snake Eater, for example, had a really long, uh, musical intro that really doesn't explain anything. It just had a lot of music to it, so. But I am going to try and keep quieter than most, than in most of the cutscenes, because Metal Gear has a crazy, complicated storyline, for those of you that have never played it before. Um, that's part of why I wanted to play through it chronologically, is so that it could kind of help those that are already confused or something kind of uh, maybe easier to follow when it all happens in the correct order and doesn't bounce around because I have to admit I was very confused when this one first came out approaching Soviet airspace 20 minutes to drop off commencing internal depressurization equipment check as you can see, I'm still downloading some of the stuff that came with the collection. Ready to go. Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Put out that cigar. <laughs> Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. You don't know who you're talking to, man. Mask. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? <laughs> Approaching you have a no idea. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. <laughs> <laughs> Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. This is... that's... that's an airplane ride right there. I never realized that it had the title on his mask. Unless that's something they changed. That's kind of cool though, because... 
it says on the mask, um, I don't know if you caught that or not right there. Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. That's funny. Down to your butts. Wee. Oh wow, man! If that was a that was one of those first-person cutscenes, I think they added that in Metal Gear Three. Actually, that um, in some of the cutscenes, you could press R one or L one or one of them. I've got some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. Eh. The future of our FOX unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. <laughs> Don't get cocky, this isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? I know, virtuous. Well, about two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. That's a mouthful. He's head of the OKB754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. So he's important. On April 12, 1961, <laughs> the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development to become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. Hmm. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. He used a mole to get the family out first, and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. <laughs> and it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The president demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the US agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The <laughs> Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the US or the Russians. 
The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? Like I said, must That's be important. Right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my side. Hmm. Well, that didn't then work out. a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. Hmm. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. Well, that ain't good. So, what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi palatins Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. That's pretty big. Is Sokolov still in a facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask. Sure. In the mountains about three miles to the west, it's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. <laughs> they moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he were still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. Yeah, so in case you haven't noticed, Metal Gear has a lot of dialogue, cutscenes, and it's very rich in historical context and stuff. So that's why I said I was trying not to talk too much, because it can get really complicated even without somebody talking in your ear the whole time. So, um. But it's an awesome story, but it's very, very deep and complicated. But contrary to popular belief, you can actually... There, up, Jack. See, Your you can do first-person stuff in this one. The ground's getting very big. If we don't get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. <laughs> Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into ha, the balloon. That's cool, his head was actually up. This takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface to air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Yeah, good old Take Fulton it system. It's been combat proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20 millimeter Vulcan cannons. Well, that should do. 40 millimeter machine guns. That should do. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, which it always does, dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. it usually does go wrong. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a game. You'd have like a five minute game. Although some would argue with all the cutscenes, you really do only have a five minute game. <laughs> there are a lot of cutscenes in these games. That's part of why they have so much story behind them. Oh, that's... Hmm. 
Dramatic entry complete. Trophy unlocked. <laughs> That'd be funny. No one would actually stare at the ground that long. I, I would like to point that out. Well, maybe. If it. Yeah, you could. If you're actually, like, shocked or something and it takes you a minute to catch your breath. I'll give you that. Dun dun dun! Ah, the good old codec calls. Yeah, you can see we're like 15 minutes in and haven't actually played anything you yet. Copy. You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be <coughs> using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You <laughs> don't have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. Oh, he just I'll gave be... his rank away. Good job. I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. This will be a sneaking like mission. Major Tom to ground you control? You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment are procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Uh. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. <laughs> I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. <laughs> I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's <laughs> covered me. in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Mm -hmm. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. Ah, you have to love the codec calls. If you don't, you'll end up hating this game. Alright. Eh, yeah, almost 20 minutes in, actually getting to do gameplay now. Um, I have to admit, though, I haven't played this in forever. Okay, that's that. Uh. Oh, I don't actually... Wait. Cure back... Oh, I don't have my backpack. That's... Yeah. Okay. Got it. Oh, that's right. This was uh, before Metal Gear Force crouch mechanic, crouch rock mechanics. Okay. I have always found it quite interesting how in the Metal Gear series they've always been very open that it's a game. Uh, which one was action? Triangle, I guess. You know, like, press the action button. It's not... Um... Six. Oh! Nope, wrong button. Try again. Um, you know, it wasn't like the... You'll have to climb up or, you know, stuff like that. It was always the action button or circle or, like, they actually acknowledged the whole controller thing. It was interesting. <sighs> Got the backpack. Get another call. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. 
Hooray. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In oh, the that's survival right. viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from... Okay. Um, keep an eye on your stamina, don't run out. Uh, your suppressor can run out. Durability. I have to find my own weapons. Fire. Stealth mission, you're a ghost. There'll be no rescue if you're captured. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. Definitely says soldiers on Cobra Ops can be issued a cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it out when you need it. How generous. False death for a short time. Just take the revival pill. Okay, so the thing is, in my, I don't think they say anything important in this one. Support team radio to back you up. Ah, oh, crap. I didn't mean to skip this then. Paramedic. I do like how they said no names and now they're saying names. She's also in charge. So she's, yeah, 140.96. That's the save mission frequency, I think, in most every game. Oh, crap. I really wanted to. Oh, well. Boss is a very important character. Um. Five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. Okay, so this guy's a little... A little obsessed. And she knows how much weight he has. So she was on a top secret mission. Didn't show up. Um, uh, I really didn't mean to skip this. I'm sorry. I thought it was just a, you got your backpack. Here's how to play things. I forgot about all this. Um, essentially, yeah, she trains, <clears throat> she trains Snake here. Um, and there was a point where she kind of just up and left and he thought she kind of abandoned him and uh, she's telling him she was actually on a top secret mission and that she had taught him all the things he needed to learn and that he needed to learn the rest on his own um, kind of like the why you fight what's your what's your purpose for fighting why are you a soldier are you going to just obey orders as in the loyalty to the end thing or are you going to question them Yada yada yada, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, the Cobra unit, a group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world as long as you've got a legendary hero. Oh yeah, she was the head of the Cobra unit, I believe, before Fox. And she's Fox mission advisor, but I don't think she's actually supposed to be part of Fox. But they developed CQ, um, Snake and the boss developed CQC techniques together. Um... Boss is communicating aboard a submarine. Her frequency is one. If you have any questions about techniques, avoid heavy combat. Okay. Sorry, I will try not to skip things like that in the future. I really thought it was just a. Try to remember That's the boss. So, CQC was a close quarter combat style that. The boss designed with the assistance of Snake here. I'm not. They never really explain exactly how that worked 
as far as um, if he was the testing dummy or if he actually helped her figure things out. Um, let's see. Oh, this is... Okay, survival life, MK22... Okay, that's fine. Um, the black is all the things you have equipped, the white is things that are in your backpack that you don't have equipped. So, you have a fatigue meter, a camouflage meter in the top right, which you can do different camos. Um, and eventually you end up unlocking stuff. Um, like, um, and you can change your camos based on your environment and it'll help you be more concealed which is always good uh, flex train looks good doesn't always look the best but it usually gives you oh whoa, whoa geez okay I got oh no don't want to do that how do I wow I forgot how to shoot name Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. Alright, we got that. And that's, um, <laughs> cheat little quick reload. Right, here we go. And I'll probably... Yay! Can I keep it? Oh, it's probably because I tranked an animal. Um, the other thing... Oh, that's codec. Select this codec. No, I don't want to do that. So, this one was a little weird. Okay, our one's first person. L1 is camera centering, I guess. Oh, this is the camera type. Okay. And where's the map? There's the map. Okay. So it hasn't all opened up yet. Oh. Circle, CQC, square is shoot, triangles, action, X is crouch. Okay. And on normal, this shouldn't be too bad. Um, th I will admit that when you play on like the higher end difficulties, the Metal Gear games can get really... Oh, ooh, I'm sinking. I'm sinking. Um, but some of the Metal Gear games can get really intense as far as... Uh, well, um, I know how to play this game, I swear. <laughs> I really didn't remember you could do that. <laughs> oh, gosh. I really thought that you just sunk for a ways and then stopped. I really didn't think you uh, drowned or whatever that was. Okay, so let's get rid of you, and you, and hope I can make it before you wake up, because they wake up or something if you touch them or something. I forget how it works. Oh, and I think, does this have the roll from Metal Gear 2? Yes, it does. Okay, so if you hit that button, you can roll. Um, is this a new area? I think it is. Is it? Maybe? Alright. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here because we're almost out of time and I'm pretty sure this next area opens up another checkpoint. So I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace!